I really hope you've enjoyed this video today and that I've been able to introduce what Mesolithic Britain would have been like. These dense woodland areas where our hunter-gatherer population is moving from one location to the next location, um, surviving from the land, but also it's a very, very fertile land that has a huge amount to offer these new humans who are coming in and taking it over and settling it. Until next time though, stay safe and well. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and alongside that as well, if you would like to support me further, please support my Patreon, and when you support my Patreon, you can help steer where the channel's content will go in the future. Until next time though, stay safe and well, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Hello, my name is Alex Isles, and welcome to Howick on the Northumberland coast and I'm going to be walking through an area of outstanding natural beauty and talking to you about what was Mesolithic Britain like. Now Mesolithic Britain obviously comes after the Ice Age. Britain has just come out of an incredibly cold period where there have been freezing cold temperatures in some parts of Britain, glaciers that are a mile thick covering the landscape and the southern part of the British Isles was covered by tundra as well. So you've got this very, very cold, unpleasant landscape. At the start of the Mesolithic, the land starts to warm up. And as the start land starts to warm up, it becomes habitable again to the Mesolithic populations that start migrating into the British Isles. The way these Mesolithic populations migrated into the British Isles was over a land bridge that existed, first of all, where the English Channel is today. You could walk across into southern Britain and then also across a large plain with hills in it, which we today call Dogger Bank or Dogger Land. And so that meant you could walk from where Denmark is today right the way across to the east coast of Britain. And so the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers started coming into the British Isles and as temperatures rose, the British Isles had transformed. The landscape got transformed as well. Thick woodlands spread across the land right up into the hills and when they spread up into the hills, only the tops of the hills were actually not covered in thick woodland. So as you were walking around the place, if you came to the top of a hill, then maybe you would see across the land this massive carpet of trees and then the next hill in the distance with its small cap on the top, which would have been visible to the Mesolithic Britons, these hunter-gatherers who were traveling through the landscape. As they traveled through the landscape as well, it was very different because of the animals that lived there too. You start seeing the megafauna, such as the mammoths and things like that, dying out and being replaced by animals that you would roughly recognize today, but even then they're very, very different. We have the auroch, which is a gigantic type of wild cattle, which would have been uh, sometimes up to two meters at the shoulder, massive, massive cattle. A good example of wild cattle can be seen at Chillingham in Northumberland, where they have a herd of cattle that we can date to around about 1100 AD. They may be older, they may be descendants of the Auroch, who are the wild Mesolithic cattle of Britain and also most of the rest of Europe, but they also may be an escaped Anglo-Saxon herd or Norman herd that has then been allowed to become wild for the purposes of hunting by the Bishop of Durham. So have a look at them now and just see roughly an idea of what a wild cow would have looked like. But the Auroch would nearly be almost two to three times the size of these particular cattle that you see here in this video. interesting one for us today but actually wild cattle are a woodland animal so they were living in the woodland areas and whereas we today think of cattle in fields and stuff like that the original animal would live in and amongst the woods and would be hunted by the Mesolithic populations as they came through here. You have the Irish elk, which was a huge version of an elk and had huge antlers coming off the top of its head. And they were common throughout the whole of the British Isles and Ireland as well. You see deer coming through. You would have wild boar as well. These animals, obviously the ancestor of the modern day pig, would live in the woodlands too. So you have all of these animals as well, including smaller animals like pine martens and then larger animals like wolves and bears, which would be predators to the Mesolithic populations. And they would be of great risk to the people who lived in and around this area. 
So these all would be inhabiting the land. And so as your Mesolithic hunter-gatherers coming through, they're competing for resources with these wild animals. But the wild animals in turn are providing food and resources as well in the form of bones and in the form of skins, which would have kept them warm. So suddenly you can see that Mesolithic Britain is very attractive. You also see that the hazelnut tree is incredibly uh, widespread in the British Isles because we sometimes see thousands, if not tens of thousands of hazelnut shells popping up in pits around the Mesolithic hunter-gatherer settlements. So a large part of their diet was hazelnuts alongside fish, terrestrial animals, birds, eggs, all of those sort of things. And so you can imagine what it would be like to live during that period in this wild uh, wilderness of the British Isles. So because of that, it's theorized that the Mesolithic populations would move through these areas and they would maybe camp on hilltops where they would actually have safety and they would be able to then go and do hunting expeditions from these hilltop areas. The way they hunted is theorized like this. What they would do is they would set a fire and clear an area of woodland. This would then cause the woods to burn to the ground. And as they burned to the ground, new um, plants would grow up as they suddenly were encountering sunlight and they weren't covered by tree cover. So you'd have things like grasses, new shoots, things like that. And that would encourage wild animals to come into these clearances, clearance areas and then start eating there. So as they come into those clearance areas, you as a Mesolithic hunter could be on the outskirt of the clearing and then suddenly you see your animal coming in, you can quickly hit them with uh, bows and spears, take them down and you've done your successful hunting. And so we see that because they found areas of burnt uh, land that date from the Mesolithic. So these were quite clever people who were using the land around them and the skills they had with the ability to make fire and hunting to actually transform and use the landscape to their own advantage. So because of that, Britain's landscape was very different to how we consider it today. We consider Britain's landscape today to have rolling hills or you know hills to be bare of woodlands. We consider it to have field systems, all of that sort of stuff. But instead, we've got a very wild woodland land full of animals that today are well like the bear, for instance, are extinct in the British Isles. And alongside that, you've also got a much warmer temperature where our Mesolithic ancestors are moving through this land Landscape and reaping the benefits of this new virgin land that is now open to them because of the ice sheets melting away and global temperatures allowing for people to move across what is now a sea. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video today. You've been able to learn something about Mesolithic Britain and about the people who lived here and why they migrated into the British Isles after the end of the last ice age. If you are not already subscribed, please do subscribe at the end of the video, like it, share it with your friends, and if you would also like to support the channel a little bit more, I do have a Patreon and that will help you to suggest content for or videos for me to produce in the near future. Other than that though, stay safe and well, and I look forward to showing you more history very soon. Thank you very much and goodbye.